Aloha. It's Wednesday. It's July the 6th. It's 11 o'clock. That can mean only one thing. Time for American Issues Take One. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. And today's title is SCOTUS Blocks the EPA to Control Carbon. Uh, with me today is my esteemed guests and co host Jay Fidel, Winston Welch, and Cynthia Lee Sinclair. Good morning, everyone. I can't wait to talk about the Supreme Court and their decisions on this show and probably for the, ne the rest of our lives because that's how big they are and how they impact our, our society. Um, Jay, the SCOTUS decision that's basically blocking the EPA's ability to regulate uh, carbon emissions, specifically from power plants in, uh, in the South, and, and this was West Virginia versus uh, versus the EPA, that was the court case name. Uh, what does this hat? What does this do the EPA and um, how their ability to enforce the Clean Air, Clean Air Act? You know, <clears throat> here at Think Tank, we've been following the decline of the country. We connected the dots um, on Donald Trump and felt that during his administration, the executive branch was broken. And then we looked over at uh, Mitch McConnell and realized that, um, that since the Senate was stopping everything um, with his friend Joe Manchin, um, that the Senate was broke and therefore the Congress is broke and still is broke. Um, and, and But we thought that somehow the country could trundle along even though these two elements were broken. Now we find, I mean, maybe we should have realized it earlier, that the Supreme Court is broke. And that makes three, three branches of a three branch government are broke. Now, what they did is return to something, oh, gee, in the 19th century, um, a libertarianism kind of thing, a, federal, a, a new federalism um, emulating the old federalism. So, states' rights. Uh, and for that matter, the Congress has to rule on everything. The president cannot take executive action directly or through his, uh, uh, his departments. And th therefore, can't get anything done um, because the Congress isn't going to do anything. So this um, EPA decision goes beyond carbon in well, you know, some states in the South. It goes to all action by all agencies of the federal government. It says, you know, you can't do these things. You can't make rules. You can't regulate um, without specific authority from Congress. And as I mentioned, Congress is broke. So what we have now is a complete stoppage of whatever is left of the federal government. The president really can't do anything directly or through his agencies. And it will get worse because it reflects an ideology. So this, this case goes beyond carbon. For that matter, it goes beyond environment. You know, it, pull, it pulls the teeth out of the EPA, it pulls the EPA apart. It, uh, it no longer can do what it was structured to do. Um, and I think that's pretty serious, given the fact that we are living in the, in the midst of an existential crisis that is climate change, which is the top priority of everything. I mean, you list everything we talk about, you know, environmental issues like climate change are really at the top. And this stops the federal government from doing anything worse. What's slightly worse than that is uh, we're the city on the hill. Uh, we're the leader of the, the free rules-based liberal order in the world. Since the Marshall Plan, and sometimes I think it's like one of those cars where you, you know, you know about cars, Tim. One of those cars where you turn off the engine and it still goes, you know, and, and we were hoping that it would still go. Now it's, the engine is stopping altogether. Um, and, and people in Europe and Asia, they used to think we cared about the environment. Greta Thunberg, she used to think we cared about the environment, the United Nations and all that. Now it's hard to say we care about the environment. And therefore, they will follow us. They will emulate us into nothingness. And if you thought they weren't going to put a lot of money into it, well, I think this confirms that. So bottom line is that at the very top of the priority list, this is a mortal blow. You know, Justice Kagan stated that Congress had already given the EPA more than enough authority to enforce the Clean Air Act. And so Congress knew full well that that's the authority that the EPA had been granted. 
Tim, if, you're so, gonna, if you're going to tell me that the, the court uh, is the decision is not well reasoned, I think we can operate on the assumption, sort of a continuing assumption, that nothing this court does with its hyper majority is well reasoned. It's all flawed. It's all based on bad facts, bad law, bad outcome. So it's, it's not a surprise to find from Kagan that arguably um, Congress has already given authority. But this court doesn't care about that. They're into, you know, destruction. So are you telling me basically we have a number of justices, maybe three or four, that are making their decisions not based on law, but religious or political bias? Is that what you're trying to imply? Yeah. Um, how, can I, how can I say it better? You can't. I just said it for you. Yes, you did. Well, that's not good. That's not good. All right. Uh, Winston, Jay's throwing me a curveball here because he agreed with me. Uh, scares me when he does that. Uh, Winston, what is your take on the ability of the EPA to basically enforce the Clean Air Act? And does Justice, Justice Kagan have a point that Congress has already decided that that's the authority they have? Um, we're going to talk a little bit later about overreach from some of these government agencies in the last couple of years. But right now, it doesn't seem like the EPA does have overreach in this. So your thoughts on this? Well, we've been looking, seeing this trend. Uh, it, it's quite a sh shocker uh, for this. But if you extend it logically, it goes really into the um, uh, almost the entire federal structure of uh, executive administration as we understand it. Look at that. If he agrees take, with uh, me too. We, we have it, so far uh, we're doing really it, well on this show. It doesn't agreement doesn't Not mean you, that Jay. it's a good thing. <laughs> so, but I, I'm looking at you, you look at the rulings we've had this year. We've had the CDC said, uh, yeah, you can't enforce a moratorium eviction due to COVID. You've had OSHA mm -hmm. uh, it says you can't enforce a vaccine mandate. Um, in workplaces, you've had EPA saying you can't carry out some of its, uh, you know, uh, its mission. Conservatives have been gunning for a lot of these agencies, um, the, the Department of uh, Education, right? Or, or it's is it is it health education and welfare, or is it just education? It's Department of Education because yeah. Betsy H E W H E W. It was H E W, wasn't it? But now it's just Department of Education. I think right? it's D O E. Yeah, because Betsy DeVos is. Well, in any event, I mean, that effectively gutted it as much as they tried uh, there. But here's the courts. This is a different thing. This is not the executive putting in someone like Betsy DeVos in charge of that. But uh, when we're seeing this, this theory that's uh, been given the non-delegation doctrine is the outer bound of, uh, bounds of this campaign, we're seeing these new legal terms that we really haven't been exposed to before, but we're talking a wholesale change in the way our nation operates. So are they going to then prevent California from from establishing its own rules like it has been allowed to do? And it just squeaked by in a ruling last year for, or this year when I remember when it was came up for uh, up in the courts. So maybe it's if, if the if, if there's a, you know, I, I don't even want to call it a silver lining, but the states, if we're going back to that idea of states rights, uh, there was a really interesting uh, article in uh the uh the times in 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 england called why america's in such a mess and it talks about how we're devolving a little bit uh if i think faster than the, the this fellow uh adam smith was um uh, proposing but essentially that the blue states may then turn the states rights things on their head and say okay if you're not going to do it at the federal level we are going to take it based on your logic and we're going to enforce these stronger things but how does that work pollution from you know one state drifts over into the other so th this is a can of worms that's opened up where do you even draw the line mm -hmm. um there's been so many just really extreme decisions in the last week that it's shaking our understanding of what uh, our federal system is all about and yeah. i think there's just a lot there's too much to, to tackle in this you know, Winston, show can you help me with something you, you mentioned that the Supreme Court is turning it over to the states. And indeed, on Roe v. Wade, that's what they did. At the same time, in this uh, EPA case, they, they turned it over to Congress, um, which is broke. And so yes. which is it? Is it Congress or is it the states? Or is it anywhere where nothing will get done? 
uh, is, it's, is it it's, anywhere which, which somehow feeds the ideology of this court? It's both. It's neither. It's whatever advances their agenda. Um, and uh, in this case, uh, right, the, the Congress in, in under that jurisdiction that the executive, the uh, Congress cannot delegate to an executive branch any power. Uh, this is ludicrous. I mean, Congress relies on that, and we have relied on on an administrative army to take care of these these rules and writing these things. But when you say suddenly that's not going to happen, and Congress is supposed to somehow do this, when they can barely pass a budget, uh, you know, in a, in a, I don't even want to call it a gridlock. It's a polarization. The other thing that's that's more scary, I think that uh, that is maybe we want to bring up in this show, but maybe it's a topic for another time, is this idea of the independent state legislature theory, which is another thing I'd never heard of before, really. I mean, I had in passing in sort of just some uh, um, rarefied uh, Trumpian arguments, but this is the idea that uh, that legislatures have the ability to call elections as they see fit. And this is a really um, absolutely game changer. If this goes through, um, and there was a, an article in well, the, the Supreme uh, Court LA already Times. decided that judges are not going to render their decisions that would affect that. Uh, that was well, the decision well, they, last they week. Have. Yes, but the, the, there's an article on July 5th, which yesterday by Lawrence Tribe and Dennis after gut in, uh, in the LA Times yesterday, an opinion on this, and it, it sort of lays it out of what we're really talking about called the the Supreme Court is poised to cut the heart out of majority rule. My hope is that, and, and as the, the fellow Adam Smith in the Times says, that maybe we've reached, I think after this weekend, I don't know, but uh, he, he likens it to prohibition, that the, the extreme right has overplayed its hand. And, uh, and, and we're going to, people are going to be uh, really shocked and say, I don't, I don't recognize this nation, whether it's right, left, or center anymore, and they that there will be some desire to get back to that. Mm -hmm. That said, when you have seven or nine justices that are uh, deciding things, it really doesn't matter maybe what Ma and Pa Kettle thinks so much because they may just go along with it as the frog in the pot gets warmer and warmer and warmer. Okay. Good points, Winston. Uh, Cynthia, this, some of the points Winston made leads me to this question for you. Uh, you know, this decision by the Supreme Court not only affects the EPA and their ability to implement the Clean Air Act, but uh, reference to was made to the CDC on how it was going to mandate to halt evictions. Isn't that government overreach that wasn't really part of their uh, bailiwick, that wasn't part of their wheelhouse to halt evictions for the, the CDC to halt evictions? Wasn't that overreach? And the question is, if it's not overreach, then um, why did the Supreme Court say the CDC doesn't have the authority to halt evictions? Well, we just discussed why the Supreme Court thinks it's okay to halt whatever it feels like, right? If it doesn't happen to fall within what they like, they can get rid of it. You know, as far as the, the over, the, um, the Supreme Court coming in on legislatures having power over elections, six states already have that. And there's like, I think, eight states that are in process of trying to get it passed in their state senates. So, um, you know, granted, we don't want it to be a federal thing like the Supreme Court has already said it's going to do in the next session. But, um, but we've already got it happening. We've got to realize this isn't a something that might happen in the future. Well, this is something that's already happening. We need to do something about it now. And I have seen, since I got up this morning in the last three hours, I have seen five commercials for that American Edge project. They're talking about um, how the government's trying to get rid of tech jobs and it's cutting American jobs. And it's just a, if you look up the American, you know, edge project, it's just a far right conservative misinformation type of an ad. So why are they showing it five times in three hours on MSNBC and CNN? 
So these kinds of things are happening regardless of what the this, this Supreme Court does. There's a couple of things I think that are important in regards to the Supreme Court that we're talking about here. And maybe some people aren't quite aware of what's going on, right? Um, the Supreme Court said there was no congressional authority for the EPA to make up its own rules. So in 2015, it came up with two rules that were going to um, curb the coal fire plants specifically. Um, established ones were, uh, the, were the 111D and the new plants were gonna be 111B. And all of these rules are coming out of that section. That is the section that Congress, that's where Congress gave power to the EPA to do these things, right? And they're saying, no, they can't. So they're saying that the Supreme Court was saying the question before the court, right, is whether this broader conception of EPA's authority is within the power granted to it by the Clean Air Act, where it absolutely was Section 111. Um, so these two new rules are specifically trying to address carbon dioxide um, pollution from these power plants. Now, this is what the Supreme Court comes back with. They said that carbon dioxide is not subject to those same rules because it has not been listed as a toxic pollutant. Carbon dioxide is not- Oh, this is on the same path as privacy was not listed in the 14th Amendment. Thank you. That's right where I was going with that. Yeah, so every premise that the Supreme Court is standing on is completely false. So where is our, where is America's, you know, way to come back at that? How do we answer those kinds of gross misrepresentation of the Supreme Court's power? So yeah, maybe the government and the CDC overreached a little bit with that whole thing that, you know, the whole COVID thing makes that a little bit sketchy to try to try to define. But this one, there's no doubt, this is beyond perverting the powers of the Supreme Court. And I don't know where our comeback is for that. And that okay. scares me. You know, I, I think you raise a great point. And, you know, there's a lot of things that progressed in the United States for 240 years that are not specifically addressed in the Constitution or the Bill of Rights, uh, 240 years of progress may not be written down in black and white. And if you have a Supreme Court or at least a few justices, that's what they're looking for to enforce their, uh, their rulings. Uh, you know, this is childish. Uh, it's beyond childish. Hey, Jay, um, thank you, Cynthia. Jay, to you, on the world stage, what is this due to Joe Biden's promise to reduce carbon emissions by 50% by 2050? How does this... Um, well, obviously, it doesn't help his credibility, but how, how, does he, how does he deal with that on the world stage? I wanted to address one thing before I get to that, Tim, and that's the, um, the Adam Smith's suggestion that this, this is uh, something like uh, prohibition, per Winston's thought. Um, prohibition lasted for 10 years, roughly, and the country realized that it was damaging and silly and wasteful. And it generated the mobs, is what it did. Um, it had all kinds of bad effect. And I guess people got the idea there was a change in the, you know, the political direction of the country. We were in uh, a, a depression already by the time it was repealed. Um, and so there were, there were factors that played uh, in, in causing the repeal. But I don't see an easy comparison between prohibition and the solution to this problem. Uh, I, I may sound, you know, negative and pessimistic about it, but I think all three branches of government are broken. If we're looking today at the Supreme Court, it's going to be broken for a while. Um, we, you know, there's a super majority that's uh, super, uh, super right wing, and, and they don't mind making decisions that are not based on the facts or the law. Uh, to wit, all the, all the factual mistakes they made in the Seattle football coach case has been the subject of great criticism over the past few days. I mean, I think they're hopeless. They're gone. And forget about them coming back like prohibition. They're not going to come back. 
So we have to look, I'm sorry to say, all you guys, we have to look at the worst side, side of things because the country is in a major decline. And really the question on that is, um, uh, where are we going from here? It is not a good place. And to, to answer your question about the global effect of this, I mentioned earlier that I, you know, I think many things that have happened in this country, the three branches of government now clearly broken, uh, are a, 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 a huge message and to the world that we have lost it. Um, and of course, if the uh, conservatives get in next time, next November, and again in 2024, <clears throat> that will confirm the message. Um, and it will, it will make it clear that we're not going to support them, um, you know, in Europe. They're not gonna, we're not going to be able to do anything because we can't get the government together. And even if we have a moment of clarity, it changes. This is a, it's, a, it's an indictment of democracy. And Xi Jinping can say, look, look at those guys. They're a bunch of clowns. They can't get it together on any level, including the military level. I'm sorry. Um, so uh, the answer is uh, people have followed us. Many countries, the United Nations, you know, good part of those 190 countries have followed us about climate change. Um, why should they now? We can't do it. And this is an indication of temperature, if you will. In the, middle, in the middle of a hot summer with heat waves and forest fires and floods and all kind of indicia that we are suffering more every day from climate change, the Supreme Court um, you know, cuts off climate change at the ankles. So how can a, another country say, oh, the United States is the leader in dealing with climate change? We are not, and we're not going to be for a while. Um, maybe longer than prohibition. Okay, to that point, Jay, you know, Donald Trump took us away from climate change on the world stage, and the rest of the world said, fine, they're, they're vacant, they're, you know, they're, they're not here, they're not participating, we'll go it alone. Now that the um, EPA doesn't have the ability to reduce carbon emissions from coal plants, which is a major source of our, our emissions, uh, does the world continue to say, well, it's like Donald Trump is back at the helm. So let's keep going alone without the United States. Is that what's going to happen? Or do they say, let's work with uh, President Biden and, and see if he could do a workaround, do some kind of trick of the administration or executive order? Uh, which way do you think uh, Europe and the rest of the world will go with this? They're going to give up on us. You know, with Trump, he did everything he could to undermine efforts at climate change. And he, and he had the Senate under McConnell and Joe Manchin to help him. And so two branches of government were, you know, were pulling the rug out on efforts at climate change. So then Joe Biden gets to be president. He tries really hard. He tries to bring Europe together, to bring the United Nations together, to get it going again. And to some extent, he succeeds. But, you know, the undermining feature is that everyone in the world knows our government turns over or should turn over every couple of years, every four years anyway. Um, so now the Supreme Court has dealt the executive a, a, a you know, a EPA is part of the executive, right? Um, then the executive, a mortal blow, because now the Congress isn't going to do anything. Um, a Republican president won't do anything. Joe Biden, the one glimmer of light who understands climate change, wants to do stuff. He's He's been cut off at the ankles because his agencies can't can perform not only EPA, but so many other things. They've telegraphed exactly what they're going to do. They don't care about it. They don't believe in it. There are a lot of people in this country don't believe in climate change right now today. So um, what I'm telling you is that if I'm in Europe, or for that matter, I'm in Asia, I say the United States is finished on its leadership in climate change. Why should we do anything? They won't. They won't fund it. And we're all cooked. Okay. What was your comment, Winston? There was something about the steam and the pot and the frog. We're cooked. A cooking. And, and, and well, yeah, but I, I don't, honestly, just between us girls, I don't think we can come back. I think we're over the Rubicon. Okay. Uh, Winston, we have a few minutes left, actually less than that. And so the question is, you know, industry is doing things without Regula, regula, like regulatory incentives or, or action. 
Uh, I'm thinking of the auto industry right now where, you know, they've always been resistant to CAFTA standards and, and mileage to, you know, to the gallon of gas. And they fought that tooth and nail, but now they, they want to continue it. They want to actually have higher numbers of miles to gasoline uh, than never before. So they didn't want to gut the CAFTA standards. Uh, so goes the, the production of electric vehicles. They don't want to go back. That's a new wave now. Well, we see other industries do the same, where regardless of what the Supreme Court says or, or the Congress, that they're going to take the lead and actually serve, uh, serve the population on the, you know, the advances of non-producing industries. Is that, is that a possibility? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it, it's going to be driven by economics at the end of the day, uh, that as these alternative energy sources become cheaper and more reliable, you're already looking at essentially Hawaii is going to become carbon neutral in, in just a few years. Now, how we're going to do that, uh, we're still trying to figure out. But essentially, these these technologies involving waves are every year, they're just getting more and more efficient. So it's going to be at some point. Uh, more expensive to uh, you know burn things, but we're not there yet. And I don't think anybody cares about what Greta has to say, um, except Greta's age. But um, they're they're mad at, at us, and rightly so. But that's not the driving force. It's not the moral force. Is is oh, how about climate change? They're not really worried about that. Uh, you you might feel it like it's super hot this summer or we had 59 inches of rain in Sydney in a day, um, those sorts of things. And people know that there's climate change, but they just don't want to look at it. It's just like when you figure out there's not a Santa Claus, um, you know, your, your world is kind of destroyed for a while. Uh, yeah, I, but I'm more concerned with where our nation is heading, um, not exactly in the EPA, um, but as a whole of how and and I saw this in opinion after opinion about celebrating July 4th and and our nation's our, 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 our basic structure of who we are and what we stand for is really just right in front of us and Jay thinks we're over the 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 Rubicon I'm not sure that we are yet but we're definitely in a place where we're seeing a lot of very different vistas mm -hmm. We don't know how that's going to look, but, you know, I, I would, if I could predict something for the next while, I don't see this changing, but maybe we'll pull back from the precipice as we pursue some sort of more extreme federalism in, um, you know, uh, maybe along the line of uh, the baby bells and how, um, and how they were broken up as, you know, Western mm -hmm. bell and, 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 and mountain bell and, and that sort of thing. Uh, that would be my guess, but we're really going to have to have a lot of aloha for our, our, our fellow Americans as we traverse this, if that's the route that we're going to go. And we may not have a choice in how we go with this because the levers of power that way right now. But that prohibition example, I think, is sort of illustrated as, 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 as big tech comes in and says, OK, you can't leave Texas as a pregnant woman. Uh, and that's that sort of law comes up in the future, as it very well may in some state or maybe Alabama or Tennessee or whatever. And people are like, wait a minute, I want to see my daughter and she can't leave the state now because she's pregnant. And they're worried about, you know, if she's it, those sorts of things are going to come. And uh, there's a good article I'll leave with this is a uh, Washington Post had an uh, opinion by uh, 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 fetishizing the the founding fathers and it was uh uh oh he was oh clinton's uh, secretary of um i want to say reuben but that's uh, it, he talks about that they weren't perfect people this is not a this is not a gospel truth that it the the document that they gave us was the best one that we could have and now we we we're amending over time and the, uh, we, you know women weren't mentioned in it and voting rights and and blacks mm -hmm. were property and all of that so it's it's a more perfect union that we're going towards but our more perfect union may not look like the union that we imagined a week ago or two weeks ago and uh we're kind of going to have to just fasten our seatbelts i think we're in for a little bit of a bumpy ride here all right Cynthia, we're out of time, but I want to get your last thoughts. Um, and I'm going to shift a little bit here. What's the next Supreme Court decision? What's it going to be? And what do they want to gut? Is it gay marriage? What is it? They've already told us the next one they're going to take up is the voting thing. They're going to give the 
election powers to the legislatures on a federal level instead of just the individual states coming forward with it. Um, so I want to still talk a little bit more about this, this whole EPA thing, because I want everyone to realize who brought this suit? West Virginia. <laughs> we all know who that is, right? <laughs> this is important since he's the one who brought it. You know, this, this senator that has been the stopping block for every single thing that the Democrats want to get done that will help Americans in profound ways. And it doesn't hurt them in any way. So, you know, nobody talks about the fact- Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, Cynthia. If they, if they ban carbon emissions from coal, everyone in West Virginia, a lot of people are gonna be affected by that. That's why Hillary That's Clinton did not thing. win West Virginia. <laughs> But they weren't. They weren't banning them. Under Rule um, 111, okay. right, there was two different sections. There was one for the ones that were new plants being, you know, uh, constructed. Those have higher levels of regulation. And then, and it's a stepping process. They didn't expect them to just suddenly stop and then put all these people out of work. Just the opposite. Within the rule, it's written that it's a step process. And as they reduce their level of carbon dioxide um, exhaust, they have to replace that same amount of energy with some sort of renewable energy. Right. It'd be, you okay. know, wind or solar um, or whatever, you know, they, that, that's what they want. That's, it wasn't just to like a, slash you're gone but but that's what that's the um I had a hard time reading through the whole court's you know decision because some of it's a little over my head and I know some of the things that they cite as precedent don't make sense to me with no time to look them all up but they're saying that that's one of the main reasons that they've decided to gut the EPA is because it's going to immediately make a bunch of people out of work in West Virginia. Well, that's not exactly true. So there you go, another falsehood in this decision that's been made. And I think the fact that it was um, you know, West Virginia and Joe Manchin that brought this whole thing about, but it started in 2019, actually, okay. under... Trump. We're not going to be able to probably have time to go through that history, Cynthia. I'm okay. sorry. We are out of time. Hey, Jay, your last thoughts and words, please. Bob, we've been talking about making a perfect, more perfect union. And I would say in our lifetimes, all of us, uh, the union has gotten less perfect um, and not more perfect. And furthermore, there are people who want to make it less perfect. And uh, we're, as I said, we're on a decline. Um, the one hope I would hold, though, and this goes back again to the comparison with prohibition, is, you know, we're shooting ourselves in the foot. The people in West Virginia are going to find there is no social safety net. At the end of the day, there are no jobs. There's no welfare. There's nobody to protect them or provide health care. And, um, you know, all of these things are going to be withdrawn. In addition to our civil rights, watch out for that. You know, you ask what's coming down the pike. I think what's coming down the pike if the conservatives have their way is freedom of the press. Enjoy that risk. That is very scary. But, you know, um, the one hope I would have is that if people look down and find out that their feet are bleeding, um, they're going to realize that they've been shooting themselves in the foot. And uh, hopefully that word will, you know, become clear and maybe we'll have a reversal like we did in Prohibition. But it has to happen soon. Uh, and, I, you know, there is a possibility logically that it will happen. The problem is that right now we are in chaos. So it's hard for people to make a clear choice. Thank you, Jay. Yeah, it took 10 years for us to realize that prohibition was really a bad, bad idea. So good points. Uh, Winston, your last thought. Okay. Health, education, and welfare was 1953. Eisenhower was president. That's when it started. Department of Education gets spun off in 79. 
and and then the other half got health and human services. So we were dating ourselves a little bit there. Um, EPA. Who starts the EPA? Richard Nixon, Republican, right? Dwight Eisenhower, Republican. We're talking, these were universally acclaimed Republican, Democratic, American initiatives. I'm going to differ a little bit with Jay on this. I think that the last 50, 60 years has seen enormous advances in uh, a more perfect union for many, many groups of people. Uh, what we're looking at now, though, is the reversal of that. And that's where people are realizing, whoa, that, that, that never even understood a different time when things were different. And they are different and they were different and they're going to be different if we don't step up and say, nope, we're not backsliding in those ways. And some of these things might go by the wayside like the EPA and it goes down to the states, but hopefully our civil rights, our freedom of the presses, our basic rights, these will be universal, universally acclaimed and upheld. But I, I, we're just in for a lot of, a lot of uh, a great time to be a lawyer. You're not going to be out of work. Not so great. Oh, uh, if got to be enough right time on the, the court line. docket to take all these cases because they're coming. Thank yep. you, Winston. Cynthia, did you find what you needed to find? I did find what I needed to find. And I've got to say, I used to think that Mitch McConnell was the most dangerous man in America. But I've decided after reading all of this and looking into some of this, that it's really Joe Manchin. He is absolutely as I don't even know what to call him as dorky as he is, and I need a better word. Um, he is the most dangerous man in America right now. And it's just terrifying to me. Okay, so what I wanna close with is what um, uh, Justice Kagan wrote in her dissent. Section 111, this is what I was talking about earlier, entrusts important matters to EPA in the expectation that the agency will use that authority to combat pollution, and that courts will not interfere. Thank you. That's it for our show. I'd like to thank Jay Fidel, Winston Welt, Cynthia Lee Sinclair. Join us next Wednesday at 11 o'clock for American Issues Take One. And also join us tomorrow for American Issues Take Two, Thursday at 11 o'clock. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. We hope to see you then. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.